How's everyone doing? Good. Can everybody hear me? Awesome. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Raise Up Missouri. So can somebody tell me what Raise Up Missouri is? Anyone? Right. So Raise Up Missouri will get us to $12 an hour by 2023. Um, and the biggest reason I'm here talking about that to Race Matters friends is because, frankly, we know who makes the minimum wage here, right? The face of 5 for 15 is not wealthy, suburban white people. It's poor, working class, often people of color families. But when we talk about raising the wage, we talk about giving economic power back to the people who make Missouri's economy work. Yes. Yeah. Right? Anyone heard about clean Missouri? Yes, so that's a constitutional amendment. Both of these are going to be in November, um, and they're both a bit easier to understand. Clean is a little hard. Um, it covers lobbyist gifts. It covers gerrymandering. It covers limiting campaign contributions. Um, it covers actually forcing the legislature to abide by sunshine laws, and it also stops us from fundraising in the state capitol. Right now, what has happened is that the Grocery Association went to folks who were getting behind preemption to stop St. Louis from raising its minimum wage, and they said, hey, come here. And they pulled them off the floor, and they said, you know, I love what you do here. You do good work. Um, I see you're, you're not clear that, you know, we shouldn't let cities raise their minimum wage. I'm from the Grocery Association. Here's a $50,000 check uh, to your campaign committee. Don't worry about it. This happens in the state capitol. The sponsor of right to work, which I'll talk about here in a second, as soon as that bill passed, got a $250,000 check. This is the state of Missouri politics. Campaign contributions unstopped, lobbyist gifts, we have no limit. So putting a $5 lobbyist gift is something that allows Missouri voters and Missouri workers to take control of their government. And finally, I wanna talk about Proposition A. Has anyone heard about Proposition A? What is Proposition A? Right to work. Right to work, exactly. Um, and when are we voting on that? August. August. So, who does right to work hurt most? Workers. Workers. Labor organizers. Hello, it, it, it unions. the union's ability to organize. Right. There's something else it does too, though. So, per pupil spending, right to work states, spend $3,500 less per student. So for everyone who has kids, think about that. $3,500 less per student. Workplace fatalities, 55% more on the job. More workers being hurt, less safety regulations. I'm living in St. Louis currently, finishing graduate school. We just had GenCorp put out a press release a couple weeks ago saying right to work is good, we're a non-union contractor, and we do great, and we have great safety. <coughs> Earlier this week, two workers died on the job because they bypassed OSHA. They didn't do good safety. Instead of clipping their harness to the building, they clipped it on what they were working on that was suspended hundreds of feet above the ground, and they fell and died. This is going to happen more. We're going to have less funding for students. And you know who is disproportionately more in labor unions than anyone else? African Americans. <clears throat> Make a larger portion of the labor force. And who benefits most from a union contract? From union contract? Uh, it's women and then African Americans. If right to work passes, African American families can expect to take home on average $2,000 less per year. That's a savings account. Union contracts, we're going to see this narrative, right, that, oh, well, right to work, uh, you know, it's not against unions, it just gives people a choice, or, oh, right to work, we don't need to worry about it, it's just for old white construction workers. But I'm telling you, who's not old white construction workers? The people at Christian Care Home who fought in Ferguson to get a union contract, who were on strike for over 100 days and only survived because right to work gave their unions the financial stability to win the fight. 
So what I'm asking is that the folks who are super involved in Race Matters, who I have always loved as an organization here, that we really think about putting ourselves to the front. And we think about endorsing these initiatives and getting out the vote. Because in August, we're not just fighting for union members, we're fighting for the education in our communities. We're fighting against future poverty, and we're fighting against workplace deaths. And whether, you know, I have met multiple folks who have gotten master's degrees in art and sociology, and they're back being carpenters, they're back being iron workers, because frankly, that's where the money is right now. So we can't think that because we're hiding in white suburbia that we're going to be okay. And we all have to realize that if we want Missouri to continue being an okay place to live and not go down the trenches, then we have to get out there and fight. I'll leave you with one more story. Yes. I just want to um, ask you real quick, so everybody, you know, which way are you supposed to vote on Prop A? No on Prop A. Thank you for and saying. I have signs in the car, and I put bumper stickers up there if anybody needs them. Perfect. And what else is on the ballot in August? In August, primaries. And, and talk about why they moved it to August. Specifically because they think that folks who care about unions won't show up in There's November. Low voter turnout in August, everybody. They put that on the ballot in August on purpose so that it could pass with very little voter turnout. But if you're going to be out of town, you can get an absentee ballot and vote in advance. It's really fun. You go to Duke Hall and you get the thing and you can fill it out right there. Exactly. So I'm going to leave you with one more story and then we're going to get to the real important stuff, which is the poetry. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's a carpenter I met in Kansas City. And he was working on a bridge. One side was in Missouri. One side was in Arkansas. On the Missouri side, the wages were anywhere, wage and benefit package, 48 to $50 an hour. In Arkansas, it was a right to work state. The highest a worker made, 15 an hour. You're looking at the chance of middle class and the chance of surviving. So this isn't a fight that we just hope that we'll win in August. This is something we have to get our boots on the ground and we have to turn out people because we got the signatures to do it last year to stop right to work from passing, but we have to do the extra work. We beat it in 1978 and I've been in Missouri for my whole life and I really hope we can beat it again. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them, but I just hope we can really in Columbia show up for the working class. Do you want to repeat about the resources that she mentioned? I don't think anyone heard that. They're available. Sure. Um, yeah, absentee ballot voting. Make make sure to do it. Yeah, like signs. signs, you said. Yeah, signs. I've got plenty of signs uh, in the car. If anybody if you want to holler out, I don't think everyone heard that. You voted. Signs in the car. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Sorry. That's we it. got them. She got them. <laughs> no on Prop A. Yeah. No on Prop A. That way everybody remembers which way to vote because it's intentionally confusing. Right to work. There you go. We're not using that messaging anymore because it's confusing. It's no one prop A now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank, Thank you all so much. Yeah.